Communication is one of the processes through which we are able to navigate and interact with the world around us. It helps us understand cause and effect and gives us feedback from the world. However, it is also one of the goals and outcomes that we are trying to achieve throughout our lives, starting with very simple communication in the form of gestures, looks, sounds, coos with our caregiver, or we're simply getting into a look or a frown or a smile and eventually learning to use our hands to point and grab and pull and push. These preverbal or nonverbal gestures are the beginnings of our communication patterns. As these interactive patterns progress, from looks to more complex gestures to patterns of gestures involving five to ten steps, eventually communication evolves into more complex symbols and words. But it is not until we master some of these more simple preverbal forms of communication that language is actually often accessible to us. Typically around 18 months of life, a child develops their ability to communicate using words, sometimes even beforehand. But this language and this symbolism used for communication evolves from our ability to use complex sets of gestures to communicate our intent and get our point across. But where do these words come from? Where do phrases and sentences come from? It's not just memorizing what someone has taught us and regurgitating it. Instead, instead, oftentimes when we develop language and sound production, which are only part of communication, we have to connect these sounds, these words, to meaning, intent, and desire. Without the emotional connection making these sounds meaningful, the sounds are just that. They're only sounds. They might be words, but they have no meaning yet. And even if we understand what they mean, it doesn't mean we, it doesn't often lead to us using them in a purposeful and meaningful context. Words are only communication if they are used with some sort of social purpose. We want to get something, convey something. We say, mommy, look, mommy, help. I want that. I don't want this. Each of these forms of communication use language, but language is simply the tool set that we use to convey our point. It is the social component of the communication that allows us to use language in a communicative format. Unfortunately, this is why so many children who are just learning words and language and sound production outside of a meaningful context, outside of a meaningful relationship, don't develop communication. This happens all the time with children with language and communication delays because most children with language delays actually have communication delays. For example, autism is not a language delay, it is a communication delay. It would be no different than if our child had a reading comprehension issue and they're not understanding what they're reading and instead we just start improving their sight reading. Sight reading helps us decode the words, but it doesn't actually give us an understanding in the full breadth of what we're reading. Sure, we might understand what the word apple means, but Susie ate the apple and felt full is a much more complicated statement than just the word apple. So to understand the complexity of that, we actually have to understand the meaning of what's being said and oftentimes even relate it to our own experiences, create an image of what it means for us. The same is true when, with expressive language. When we are communicating with language, we have to have desire, motivation, and emotion to give that word meaning and purpose. If we simply teach labeling and memorization of words, unfortunately most children never develop into true communicators or develop any form of conversational language. This all happens not by teaching children words, but instead by encouraging scenarios where a child is motivated to communicate their intent and desire, especially within safe, nurturing relationships like those found with caregivers. This is where it begins, but it continues to evolve throughout our lives with peers and siblings and other adults like teachers. This evolution occurs not simply because the child knows what to say, but because the child figures out what to say and they get feedback based on it. Sometimes we agree what a child says, sometimes we disagree. But the one thing we never ever want to do is shut down communication, even if a child is communicating in inappropriate ways. It's not about telling them, no, you can't say that, and certainly there are scenarios where that is appropriate. But more importantly, we want to figure out where is it coming from? What emotion is driving this language? What are you really trying trying to convey. When a child says, I hate you, do we really think they hate us? Unfortunately, some parents and professionals and adults really do, and they try and shut that down. And instead of saying, wait a second, what happened? How are you feeling? They say, you can't say that. And now the emotion behind what is being conveyed is also shut down, not just the inappropriate language itself. 
we don't necessarily want to encourage a child to say, I hate you, but we do want to acknowledge what they're saying because it is not necessarily the words itself, but is the meaning and the intent behind it. This child is frustrated. This child is angry. That is what they're communicating. They are not actually hating you. These words and symbols happen between a year and a half and two and a half years of age and they continue to evolve they turn into things like creative pretend play and children develop higher and higher levels of this ideation and symbolism as this progresses and children begin to communicate in reality and in pretend they start communicating more emotionally they start communicating with opinions they start thinking more before they speak and thinking about how they can achieve their goal what are the phrases and words that they need to string together in order to express their idea or convey their intent this is when children move from becoming more action-oriented impulsive communicators where everything that pops into their head they either act on or speak about until they eventually learn the ability to pause for a moment and whether it is an active thinking process or it's just a thinking process that is instilled inside of them they start to actually begin to separate the impulse and the stimulus they're taking in from their response D dr greenspan said this is when thinking truly occurs when we move from action-oriented and more impulsive responses to thoughtful responses to pausing and thinking what is my next move here that is when thinking truly emerges so you can see the connection between communication engagement with our caregivers and the ability to think and plan ahead are all necessary skill sets or capacities that allow us to be adaptable and functional adults these Communication patterns continue to progress throughout our lives. We become more logical by connecting ideas and answering who, what, when, where, why, how questions. And eventually we begin to communicate in a more reflective manner. We start talking about the things that we believe in ourselves. We start being able to think about our own experiences, think about our own feelings, our own desires, not just express them, but actually analyze them. When you think about good communicators and what they might do that other communicators may not do, good communicators have all of these skill sets. They are able to analyze their previous experiences and adjust and adapt their communication to the current experience and environment they're in. They know their audience, for example. They know who they're talking to. They know what to say and what not to say because they're able to analyze themselves and the world around them. So you can see a good communicator is not just learning words, but they're doing many things at one time. They're aware of the logical connections in their perceptions of the world around them that require empathy and engagement, but they're also aware of themselves and can be introspective and reflective and understand how they are feeling and what they're trying to achieve in that moment. This is most important in order to evolve and develop good communication skills around a broad range of emotions and experiences and being able to apply these to a broad range of relationships. Without all of these abilities working together, it's easy for our communication skills to sometimes fail us, where we might avoid certain situations, or we might feel less successful at achieving our goals. We might not even know what to do next or how to proceed. And unfortunately, children or adolescents or even adults faced with those scenarios tend not to feel very secure and confident when interacting with the world around them. And as a result, they may not build the nurturing, healthy relationships that an adult needs to truly be happy and successful.